We're going to install Julia programming language on Windows, Linux, Ubuntu, and then also have the tie-in so that you can run Julia through Jupyter. The first thing that you want to do is come to download uh, Julia, and you have Julia downloads. Uh, select that, uh, and then you'll come to the Windows. You can select your version, which platform you have. I'm going to select the 64-bit version right here. I'll go ahead and save it uh, to my desktop. It's going to go out uh, to the Amazon uh, Web Services link where the uh, the package is going to be downloaded from. And then we'll have, once this finishes, we'll have about a uh, 64 gigabyte or megabyte, not gigabyte, 64 megabyte uh, exe file here um, that we can use to then uh, work with uh, and download Julia. Okay, so it's going to extract. I'm going to double click on this executable. It's going to uh, download or extract, and it's going to ask me where I want to put this. Uh, don't go with the default. I'd recommend just putting it in C colon slash Julia dash version number. Okay, so now if you'll notice here, this is Julia 0 0.5.0. Okay, I'm going to install it, but just uh, as it's installing, let me just mention that first number means that uh, of zero means that it's currently under active development. And so you if you upgrade to another major release, chances are your code is going to break. So just be aware of that as you're installing Julia. Um, okay, so there is uh, my Julia uh, package. My actual Julia program is right here. And so I'm going to copy this directory up here and then come to environment uh, variables. So just type en here and then edit the environment variables. Come down to the environment variables link and select path and edit and then new. Okay, so go ahead and paste that in there so that when you type Julia at the command line, it'll know to go look in that bin folder of your new directory and click OK on all of those. Okay, so now I have uh, Julia installed. I'm going to delete this executable right there. I have my shortcut. Uh, go ahead and type that or uh, double click that. And you can try print line with something like a uh, hello world. Okay, this is really small. It's kind of hard to see, but there it is. Um, the uh, Julia program ran for the first time. Okay, uh, the other thing that you can do with adding that environment variable is you can just start a CMD, a command prompt, and now you can just type Julia at a command prompt and you get something that uh, runs through a DOS uh, window shell and you can do uh, the same thing now that Julia is started up. Um, and so in this case, we'll just do another uh, hello world and there you can see it ran. Okay, now I want to show you how to add or remove packages uh, to Julia. Um, we can add a package. Um, okay, I'm going to do HTTP client. Okay, this allows you to use web services within Julia uh, like a browser, uh, be able to retrieve websites. Uh, if you want to remove a package, you just do RM. But let me go ahead and just add this one first of all. And what it's going to do is it's going to go out and um, go to the git repository and update the list of packages and also look for any dependencies. So you need dependencies uh, to run this client. Uh, this package I'm installing is going to have a couple other packages that it uh, depends on and so it's going to um, okay so there it is it's going to go out and uh, install this HTTP client and uh, what we'll hopefully see at the end is that it successfully installed. Okay, so there it goes. It's downloading all the source files. So package management in Julia is really nice. Um, and it updated it uh, and it installed it. Okay, and if I want to remove it, um, just RM. And then it goes ahead and, and uh, finds all the dependencies for that package, uh, making sure that other packages are not dependent on them, and then removes those. Okay, the other one that we want to get um, is going to be uh, 
let's see, we want to add the I Julia. This is going to let us uh, run Julia through our Jupyter notebook. And this one is going to take a little while. Uh, you know, for me, it's going to take probably about 10 minutes or so, maybe five minutes. And so while we're doing that, let me just go ahead and show you how to install this on Linux as well. If I type Julia, I can see that um, it's not currently installed. It says go ahead and do sudo apt-get install Julia. Okay, so this is for Ubuntu. Uh, but if you have a different package manager like Yum or others, uh, you know, Fedora um, has different package manager, uh, you can use that one instead and it should work. So here I'm installing, uh, I installed uh, Julia on uh, Linux. This is uh, in the Windows developer version. Uh, after Windows anniversary update, you can install Ubuntu directly on your uh, Windows computer. And then if you want to remove it, you can just do remove. And it'll ask you if you want to proceed and just click yes. Okay, so there it goes. It's going to then uninstall uh, Julia on my Linux computer. And when I try to type it again, it's not going to work. Okay, so there it is uh, with Linux. Let's go back to our, uh, this is the iJulia install. And so you can see it's getting these dependencies. Um, it had to get some of these dependencies in, uh, you know, just this list here you can see and it gives an update on how uh, fast it's installing. Qt uh, there, PyQt, um, there's your notebook, and it's getting Jupyter, so it's installing all of these. And um, so once we're done, once we're done with this, um, what we'll hopefully be able to do is just type uh, Jupyter, start up Jupyter notebook, and then this will give us an option to be able to start a uh, a, a Julia uh, version uh, that allow us to type in Julia code. So I'll have the Julia kernel running instead of the Python kernel. Um, let me just talk, uh, you know, just a little bit about, um, you know, the speed of Julia um, and the package dependencies. Uh, Julia is still not to the level of uh, full-fledged uh, language like Python or others that have, you know, thousands of different uh, add-on packages. Um, you know, Julia is nice because it gives a very uh, clean interface, clean code, uh, very concise, uh, and it's considered to be as as fast as uh, or nearly as fast as C. When uh, you know, after the uh, Julia code is uh, compiled. Uh, but it's easy like Python or MATLAB uh, to program. Uh, I just wanted to mention, um, you know, with that, uh, Julia, even though it doesn't have a lot of packages, you can call Python packages. It's easy to call Python um, or other, uh, you know, it wrap something, uh, wrap a C function or something like that. Uh, so you can extend the capabilities of Julia by calling some of these uh, packages that you might already use. Uh, again, one of the frustrations of, of using Julia right now is it's still under active development. Things are changing. Uh, you know, any major release might break your code. Uh, so you just gotta uh, kind of commit to uh, stay on top of that. Okay, so this one is uh, still going, it's still installing. Um, and uh, once it's done, then I'll go ahead and open up a uh, Jupyter Notebook, and then we'll hopefully be able to run it uh, through the Jupyter Notebook as well. Okay, um, let me just go, just as this is going, um, also mention, uh, you know, this is the apmonitor.com channel. Uh, we also have a, uh, you know, most popular versions of our software is in Python and MATLAB, but, um, there's also the Julia version as well. So I'll just, uh, if you want to download that, you can come here. Uh, there's the Git address, uh, or you can also just download, uh, you know, you can get it on GitHub. 
so there it is, APM Julia, select that uh, package. And really all you need is apm.jl. Uh, okay, so this integrates the AP monitor package. And the rest of this right here is just, you know, example applications like a mixed integer, nonlinear programming. Um, here's a uh, Hawk Schakowsky, uh 71. This is just a, uh, you know, an optimization problem uh, and others. So I've, you know, we've uh, worked to get differential algebraic equation optimization with mixed integer nonlinear programming uh, for Julia. Okay, let's go back here. Uh, looks like this uh, finished. Uh, okay, so it's it's all done. Let's go ahead and start up the Jupyter Notebook now. Okay, so I'm just going to start up Jupyter Notebook as I typically do with Python, uh, but now we'll hopefully have a uh, something there that allows us to also start a Julia Notebook. Okay, so it's going to open up a web page, and then we're going to have the option over here on the right for new, and if we go down to notebooks, we'll do this Julia uh, version, and this will bring up a Jupyter Notebook uh, for Julia. And if we do the print line with uh, hello uh, world, and then control enter, then it should give us um, the result. Okay, so it printed out below the hello world. Okay, so this is uh, Jupyter uh, running Julia. Uh, we've done the full install in Windows, and we've also uh, shown how to do it in Ubuntu Linux as well.